Welcome to our second lesson in the topic Mappings and Relations. In this lesson 2, we are going to start with a review of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, you learned to identify relations between elements. You also learned to connect two elements using a relation statement. We are going to build on to this knowledge acquired in the previous lesson, in this lesson. And in this lesson, you will learn to use arrow diagrams to represent relations and functions. In addition to that, we, you will be introduced to the terms domain and range and how they are used in this topic. You will also identify different ways of expressing relations. So those are our learning outcomes. Let's get started with our lesson. I hope you're ready. Let's start with this example. There was a party and four children opted to go for this party. They were in the names of Joan, Simon, Silver, and Jane. At the party, they were given a chance to choose the drinks they would have loved to take. And Joan chose a Fanta, Jane chose a Sprite, Simon chose a Coke, and Silver chose a Pepsi. This already is a set of information that is showing how the different party goers related with the, with the choice of drinks at the party. This information can be presented differently. Look at this. We can use arrows to show that Joan chose a Fanta, Simon chose a Coke, Silver chose a Pepsi Cola, and Jane chose a Sprite. This is not very different from what we have already seen. But when you are using arrow diagrams, you can also represent this differently. For example, the word chose is appearing four times because there were four choices. Yet chose is the same relation statement used for all the four students. Now let's look at it this way. We can have Joan, Simon, Silver and Jane put into one set and then the drinks in another set. And because of that, we are going to use one, one statement to link the set of the party goers and the drinks without repetition, such that I'll get something like this. This still represents the same piece of information showing that Joan chose a Fanta, Simon chose a Coke, Silver chose a Pepsi, and Jane I hope we are still together. Now, in the next set of activities, we will be representing our information like this. And this is called an arrow diagram. Let's have another example. We have a set of digits on the left and another set of digits on the right and we have a relation statement is a factor of so if we are to link up these elements we have two as a factor of six remember factor of it means that when i get six divide it by two I will get a whole number. So let's continue with the rest. 3 is also a factor of 6. 
3 is a factor of 15. 5 is a factor of 15. 5 is also a factor of 35. 7 is a factor of 35. And 6 is a factor of 6. Because 6 divided by 6 gives us 1. Therefore, 6 is a factor of 6. And this information is perfectly represented in an arrow diagram. Another example, where we have the relation statement as add 3, and we have the first set of values and the second set. 2 add 3 gives us 5. 3 add 3 gives us a 6. And so on, 8 add 3 will also give us 11. There are cases when a relation statement can be given as an equation or a function. Here is one of such examples. If you have a relation statement y is equal to x plus 3, this simply means that when x is equal to 0, your y value will be 3. How do you get a 3? Just substitute for x. Where x is, replace it with a 0. You have y is equal to 0 plus 3. And therefore, y will be 3. When x is 1, we'll get the y value as 4. When x is 2, the y value will be 5. When x is 3, your y value will be 6. Let's take one more. When x is 4, your y value will be 7. This is not yet in an arrow diagram. If you're to put it in an arrow diagram, you'll have something like this. And this is similar to what we've already seen. So the information that we have as a result of using the equation y is equal to x plus 3, we have also the same information in the arrow diagram. Now, there is something that I need to pay attention to, and I think you should also pay attention to it. In this, we had the values 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, Put in the relation statement y is equal to x plus 3. So these values we can call them inputs. And when you put these values in the relation, your output is the values 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So those are our outputs. So if you are to relate this with a factory setting, you have a set of input values and then the relation works as the processing statement for you to get an output. And this information is still represented in an arrow diagram shown. Now we are going to use mathematical statements to explain this because now you are getting better and better as we learn more and more. So you cannot keep using inputs and outputs because those statements are mainly used for a factory setting. So for mathematics, you're going to have your arrow statement and then you have your inputs and outputs and then the relation statement. But this time, your inputs in mathematics are referred to as the domain. Please take note of that. And your outputs are referred to as the range. So the inputs are the domain values, 
and the outputs are the range values. So you just get domain worked on by the relation statement for you to get a range. Ways of expressing a relation. There are four ways through which you can express a relation. The first one and the one that we have used most is using an arrow diagram. And this is called a mapping. This is an example of arrow diagram. You have your domain and a range. The next way of expressing a relation is using a table. So you can have your domain and range put in a table as shown on your screen. The third way is using ordered pairs. These are examples of ordered pairs. I'm sure you've met this one somewhere especially while plotting graphs or doing things which involve graph drawing. Now, they are ordered pairs because the order to which they appear matters. If you exchange them, you change the meaning. And these ordered pairs, we are going to identify the domain first. For example, in this ordered pair 1, 4, 1 is the domain value. And we can also identify other domain values as shown on your screen. So for all the, val for all the ordered pairs that we have, we have 0, 1, 2, and 3 as the domain. I'm sure by now you can even guess which values form the range. But let's not leave it just hanging. The range values are 4, 3, 5, and 6. The order, remember, the order of these values matters. That's why they are referred to as ordered pairs. The last way of expressing relations is by using a graphical form. Graphical form, if you have ordered pairs, now you can easily figure out what the graphical form is all about. This is our graph, and therefore we can plot the ordered pairs on the graph as shown. Those are the four ways of expressing a relation, and that marks the end of our lesson. But just before you leave, remember in this lesson, you have learned to represent a relation on an arrow diagram. You have also learned to determine the range for relations given as a functions. You have learned about domain and range in mappings. You have also learned different ways of expressing a relation. Thank you very much for being a part of this lesson. Now, try out the questions that appear in the exercise. Thank you.